The Akasa Soho H4 is a tower CPU cooler that is made to fit into the mid-range segment of the market. It has all the signs of a good CPU cooler, plenty of RGB, a good fan, a well-made heatsink and copper heat pipes. However, with so many choices under 50 US dollars, can the Soho H4 handle the competition? The Akasa Soho H4 is a single tower CPU cooler that aims to deliver a good performance while having plenty of addressable RGB LEDs installed on both the heatsink and the included 120mm fan. This CPU cooler is priced at around 55 US dollars or euros, give or take. The price will vary based on location and the available stocks. What we do know for sure is that this cooler can be used with two 120mm fans in a push-pull configuration and has the widely requested gaming look that many are looking for. The Soho H4 has a single 120mm fan, called the Soho A-Air. Now these fans will look similar to you and that's not a surprise because these fans are made, more than likely, by the same OEM that makes the Alpenphone Wingboost 3 fans. And this is a good sign as the Wingboost 3 fans are quite good especially for static pressure and heatsink usage. The fan on the Soho H4 has a minimum speed of 500 RPM and a maximum speed of 2000 RPM. While it is PWM compatible, it can't be completely turned off via the motherboard. For that, you will have to use a dedicated controller and that's unfortunate. The Soho H Air has a regular hydrodynamic bearing system and an estimated lifespan of 40,000 hours. The fan has plenty of good features, an impeller design that is clearly made for high static pressure and radiator plus heatsink usage and rubber pads on both sides of the corners of the fan frame. These pads, while small, will help with the vibration dampening and will prevent any scratches on the heatsink. The cable of the fan is quite long and should reach any fan header on your motherboard. Unfortunately, while the cable is all black, it is not covered by any sleeving. This is done to save on co-production costs, but also because a sleeved cable will take more space and will be harder to route around your system. The heatsink of the Soho H4 has a single tower design and features 45 aluminum made cooling fins. As is the case for many CPU coolers, these fins are bent down at the edges. This will not only create a channel for the air to go through and limit the airflow leakage of the heatsink, but this design will increase the general structural integrity of the heatsink. The cooler has four copper made heat pipes, which are arranged in the traditional U shape around the heatsink. This provides the optimal cooling transfer for a heatsink and a solid base for the cooling fins to sit on. The base plate of the Soho H4 has a direct touch design. This means that the heat pipes are integrated into the surface of the base plate. This design is widely regarded as being inferior to a solid copper made base plate, as these direct touch base plates have less surface area contact thanks to the heat pipes being uneven. In terms of the design, the Soho H4 looks good, with an all black coating applied on every component of the heatsink. The top of the cooler is covered by a plastic made shroud that also houses a few addressable RGB LEDs. Speaking of the addressable RGB LEDs, here is where one shortcoming of the Soho H4 lies. While the RGB works great, it's not exactly the best implementation out there. These white lines present on the top plastic shroud should be illuminated on their entire surface to create a good light pattern. But they are not. Instead, we get some illuminated points where the LEDs are installed and everything else is left in the dark. While not a deal breaker, it's always going to be an easy thing to notice and it's disappointing for a cooler that is advertised with the RGB functionality as a feature. Fortunately, the RGB illumination on the fan is uniform and looks great. When we talk about accessories, the Soho H4 scores good. You get a user manual, a backplate, a tube of Akasa thermal compound, a 3-pin RGB splitter, 4 fan mounting clips, 2 AMD mounting bars, 2 Intel mounting bars, 4 bolts, 4 plastic spacers, 4 metal nuts and 4 double threaded screws. And that's it. The installation process for the Soho H4 is simple and easy to understand. The manual is also doing quite a good job explaining things. You first get the backplate and install it at the back of the motherboard. Afterwards, on the front of the CPU socket, you install the plastic spacers. Afterwards, you place the correct mounting bars in their place and secure them with these metal nuts. Finally, you place the thermal compound on the CPU surface and place the heatsink on the mounting bars, lining up the mounting points of the mounting bars with the self-contained spring-loaded screws of the heatsink. You tighten the spring-loaded screws and that's it. What's left is installing the fan on the heatsink and connecting everything to your motherboard or fan hub. 
and with the Soho H4 installed on a standard ATX motherboard, we get to see that this CPU cooler isn't really that big. In terms of clearance, the front fan does not reach the RAM slots of the motherboard, albeit some wider than average RAM kits might have issues with this cooler. For graphics card clearance, the space between the backplate of the graphics card and the size of the heatsink is 30.4mm, which is adequate for our needs. However, keep in mind that the space for the graphics cards will vary based on your motherboard and your graphics cards. Before we test the CPU cooler, you will get to hear a noise sample of the cooler going from the either a dead stop or the lowest possible RPM towards the maximum speed available for the included fan, in this case 2000 RPM. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful for comparison of multiple coolers or fans, this measurement will not consider additional noise sources such as bearing ticking, the fan vibrating on the heatsink, and so on. With a single 120mm fan running at a maximum of 2000 RPM, the Akasa Soho H4 reached a maximum noise output of 44 decibels, with the measuring device placed at a standard distance of 10 cm away from the CPU cooler and the system. This places the Soho H4 on the bottom part of the chart. The testing of all CPU coolers, unless otherwise stated, is done using an Intel i9-9900K running at both at its factory settings and frequency, and it is then overclocked manually to 5 GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 benchmark, a popular benchmark that is easy to use, easy to understand, and with reliable results. All testing is done with a fixed ambient temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. And in this test, the Akasa Soho H4 reached a maximum temperature of 65 degrees Celsius with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. This places the Soho H4 next to models such as the Noctua NHD9L or the Be Quiet Shadow Rock TF2. Not a bad result and it's what I've expected for such a small CPU cooler. However, the next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its limits, many even above that, as this test uses a system stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software. This benchmark places an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something which you will never encounter in your daily usage. In fact, the only CPU load that is similar with this one is heavy video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Akasa Soho H4 reached a maximum temperature of 91 degrees Celsius. Celsius, with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. This places the Soho H4 next to the Silentium PC Thera 5 or the Be Quiet Darrock 4. The Akasa Soho H4 is a capable CPU cooler, however such a small heatsink has no business with overclocking and especially with overclocking high TDP CPUs. The cooler has a few shortcomings, well just three mainly. The price is too high for such a CPU cooler and for this level of cooling performance. There are better CPU coolers out there that look better, are quieter and are cheaper. The Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 for example looks better, is quieter, it's better built and it is cheaper. All this while having the same performance, give or take. The second shortcoming of this CPU cooler is the RGB. While it's there and it's easy to use, it's not exactly implemented in a subtle fashion. Instead of having the entire top cover illuminated by RGB, there are only points of light where the LEDs are installed, which give this cooler a sense of being cheap. The third shortcoming is with the heat pipes. For this price range, this cooler should have had 5 copper made heat pipes and not just 4. In addition, it should have had a solid copper made base plate and not the direct touch design. Four heat pipes and a direct touch base plate is exactly what causes this level of average cooling. The Akasa Soho H4 is not a bad CPU cooler, it is well built, it has a good fan, it's easy to install and it looks good, however it's just too expensive for what it offers and the competition is fierce around this price point. If you can find the CPU cooler for a lower price, then you can use it and it will do a good job with a medium to high TDP CPU. However, at this price point you will have better CPU coolers out there that are not only better built, they look better even with RGB and the performance offered will be better for less. If you like this review then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Substarostar pages of this channel.